Hi everyone, this is Nicole Spore and welcome back to my channel. This is a year of Christmas episode four and this is going to be some really cute cherry deer wreath shaped tag ornaments. So if you guys have followed any of my Christmas videos in the past, um, when I do my Christmas series at the end of the year or anything like that, you know that I always like to incorporate some sort of tags or tag ornaments into my Christmas making. And I have always loved this wreath from Lawn Fawn and I love the little cherry deer and truly I actually just pulled out a bunch of my product from my Lawn Fawn bins and played around and this idea just popped into my head. So everything you see here obviously is product that either has been out for a few years or was released within the like the last holiday season or something. Um, so nothing is new. I hope some of you have similar products maybe in your stash that you can create something similar and we're gonna get started. Now I die cut everything for my cute little tag ornaments today from Lawn Fawn textured cardstock for the most part. For, so if it's the wreath, the bow, um, any of that, anything green or red, it's going to be from the Lawn Fawn textured cardstock, which I absolutely love. I also decided to make a super thick wreath. So in that large wreath set, you get the stitch to circle that you can see I'm building my wreath on, and then you get the wreath building piece. It die cuts four at a time, the bow piece, and then you do get some little circles to make berries. I opted not to use those. We're going to use some of my favorite pretty pink posh pearls today for a touch of embellishment um, and just to give it a little bit more of dimension. I did do a two-tone wreath, so we're using two of the colors from the textured cardstock pack. I like it to have lots of dimension. This definitely was the most time consuming part, die cutting all of the pieces. I am gonna show you some time saving tips and tricks when we get to the deer, as I did not want to cut, um, I didn't wanna cut the deer three more times. Pink for the insides of the ear, black for the eye, and, may, and maybe the hooves or either, I was gonna do like a dark chocolate, but you're gonna see, we're not even gonna worry about that at all. So definitely um, keep on watching if you wanna see how to save some time. <laughs> I went ahead and assembled all of the wreaths first. Now this is really going to be the base of our tag ornament. We are gonna stamp an extra little tag. I do this a lot, especially if I'm creating something that I think could be used as an actual ornament on a tree. I like to make a little removable tag so that the recipient, after they've opened their package, can remove that little tag and hang it on the tree. And you're gonna end up with this cute little deer peeking out of the wreath. I don't know why this reminds me of Looney Tunes, but maybe it's just me. <laughs> but when I was growing up, you know the Looney Tunes when that like Bugs Bunny or whatever popped out of the circle? And that's what this reminds me of. I have no idea why. There's nothing even Looney Tunes about this, but whatever. That's where my mind goes. Now you know how I think, I guess. <laughs> So literally, I simply layered these leaves on. I am using liquid adhesive. Lots of liquid adhesive was used in these. I do not want to worry about any of this stuff falling off. So I, and really they're so delicate that it's kind of important to make sure that you are securing them. I do want this to be on a package. It might get jostled around. Um, if you're going to use it later on, I want things to stay put. So I use liquid adhesive, even though for the most part in my paper crafting, I try to avoid it when possible. I am using the Barely Glue today, but Lawn Fawn Liquid Glue or any of those liquid glues would be great. So to create the bow, there are three pieces. There are the little bow strings hanging down, the little edges coming out. You can use like one without the other. You don't have to use them all. And then the center piece. And I will tell you when creating these bows and pretty much a lot of the things on this project, some reverse tweezers are going to be your best friend. 
I have two different pairs. One pair I believe is from Honeybee and one is from Spellbinders. Um, but Hero Arts has some and I know some other companies have some as well. They are great because they're going to, they work as a clamp. So I clamp my bow and then I clamp it in the center once I've wrapped everything up and around and I leave it there while the glue dries. So you'll notice that I am working in sections. While I am assembling the wreath, I'm also assembling bows so they can be drying and I can keep switching. I did use both pairs of reverse tweezers that I own and I am switching them out um, constantly as I build the wreaths. So I built all of the wreaths first and then I moved on to the deer. This is a project that I'm so grateful that I am doing early in the year. This is not one that I would want to try to do last minute. It is a lot of little pieces. Um, you definitely could. I'm not saying you couldn't do this last minute, but there is a lot of pieces. There is a lot of assembly. I think it did take me a few hours to die cut everything, assemble everything, and then just kind of do all the finishing. But it's like I said, we're early in the year. It's not Christmas time when when this video comes out. And so I had plenty of time. There was no time crunch. You guys, why did I not think of this like years ago? I love my Christmas series, but sometimes I am so freaked out trying to come up with ideas or trying to fit all my ideas into the holiday season. So even though I will still be doing that series at the end of the year, I am loving that there is a monthly series dedicated to some ideas. Hopefully, I've heard from so many of you guys that you love this, that you love um, being inspired to kind of stay on track with your Christmas card making or your Christmas tag making early in the year so that you aren't stressed out when the holidays come. Um, same thing for me. I'm really excited about this. And we are making six tags today. You could totally... Uh, make as many as you want to. Six was about my quota uh, because I was like, it was a lot of assembly. I would definitely make these again though. It's really fun. So I am using the Lawn Fawn Scalloped Circle Gift Tag. Everything I'm using today is from Lawn Fawn. Um, Lawn Fawn is one of my all-time favorites. And I love just mixing and matching all the different products from my stash. Um, even down to the inks, we're using Noble Fur and Lobster. And this is the Say What Christmas Critters stamp set stamped on these scalloped circle gift tag dies. The scalloped circle gift tag dies is one of my most often used. You've probably seen it in other tag videos because I love it. It is a fantastic basic and I highly, highly recommend it. Now, the Cheery Deer, I know, did come out this last holiday season, 2021, and he's so cute. I actually did a Patreon-only video where I showed some gift bags, and I used him in that video. So if you are a member of Patreon, you've probably seen that, as you can go back and watch, or my top-tier Patreon members. You've probably seen that, um, but it is available at any time if you join you can go back and catch that. It was an exclusive for my Patreon members, but it was a really cute gift bag and I loved it. So super, super fun. And I love being able to use him again. Now, this is where I was talking about, I did some time saving tips. I die cut the deer. I love that it has a backer. So I got the, I've got the backer and I've got the outline from white cardstock. I really went back and forth where I tried to decide, do I want to use white? Do I want to use black? And I opted to do the white and I'm glad I did. I like how it looks a little bit better. So I'm assembling my outline right on top of the backer first. You will also see that I've got a stack of um, chocolate bar cardstock from Lawn Fawn and I also have some vanilla malt. So that's going to be a cream and a dark brown. Those are the only two colors I die cut from the outline die. It is a, a single die, so you can't like die cut the antler separate and all of those different things. And because of that, I tried to find a way to save some time. And the way to do that is I'm actually not going to fill in the, the hooves like I talked before. That's where the glue goes, where I tuck him back behind the wreath. Because it doesn't get seen, I didn't worry about filling those in. For the insides of the ears, I wanted to do a light pink 
I'm going to take a Copic marker and I'm going to color in the insides of the ear. I also didn't want to die cut the whole deer just for the eyes. So because of that, I made sure, um, luckily, a lot of those little pieces you can see just stuck in the outline, even though they die cut all the way. Because of that, I glued the whole thing down. I'm going to take a black jelly roll pen. I'm going to draw in the eyes and the mouth. So I didn't have to die cut that either. I am also going to take some Copic markers and I'm going to shade the face and the tummy and the antlers just to give it a little more character, be a little extra as I'm always saying in my videos. I always think to myself, this is going to be super simple. And then I get into it and I can't stop myself. So there's that. Um, yes, there's going to be a little heart accent. Yes, we're going to add a Rudolph pom-pom nose. How can I not? And we're going to use some pretty pink posh, uh, cherry pearls for berries on our wreath. I didn't die cut the little berries. We're instead going to use the pearls because I like the dimension. And this is an ornament and I want it to be super decorative. I'm using E40 and 43 for the face. I will tell you, um, <coughs> excuse me, I would shade the face first. Sorry, I had to get a drink. I would shade the face first and then do the eyes and the mouth, which I get smarter about here in a minute, and then take your jelly roll pen. You don't want to smear that, the jelly roll pen. It will take a little bit to dry. It's the same pen that I always use for eyes, for critters and things like that, but I love that it's kind of glossy and it looks really nice. I'm a little better than just a straight pen. It's my favorite black pen to use for eyes. And then just doing a little shading, a little R30 for the insides of the ears. Those are the only three Copic markers I used. You could use whatever, but I do think that little bit of shading gives so much more character to our reindeer. And then the pom-pom nose. I've had these little mini red pom-poms forever, and this is another opportunity to use your reverse tweezers to clamp that pom-pom in place with the liquid glue and let it dry. I am simply going to then assemble the rest of my deer. I think I do maybe a couple more here on camera. Um, and then we're just going to kind of cut out some of that and come back for finishing detail. So it is fairly simple um, finished, but there are quite a few little steps as far as assembly. And everything but the greetings that we stamped on that little scallop tag is die cut. I love a fully die cut project. You guys probably know this about me already. Die cutting is my jam. I love it and I love being able to mix and match different products from my stash to create this. So let's say you don't have the large wreath. Maybe you have some greenery or foliage from other die sets. You can take a circle um, or a couple of nesting circles and create a round shape. You can then glue all kinds of leaves and things on, or maybe you even have more leaf shaped dies. You could make a wreath out of those and then pop a deer in the center. Maybe you have this deer, maybe you have another die cut deer, maybe you have any kind of other um, critter image to pop up out of the center or a snowman whatever it might be. You can even use a stamped and colored image if you wanted to. So there, there are lots of different things you can do to achieve a very similar look without having to have these exact products if you don't have them. So that's some ideas for how to create a wreath if you don't have these uh, particular dies. The bow. There are so many companies that have a dimensional bow. Maybe you already have one in your stash. You can pop a bow on that foliage and then do that. You could also die cut a solid circle backer. So maybe you don't want it to be so see-through wreath-like. Maybe you want it to have a backer. You could build your wreath on a round backer and do it that, and then stamp your greetings on the back of that way and not have a separate little tag if you didn't want to. Another idea is adding either stamped or die cut 
numbers to date it. If you want to date the ornament, maybe you make ornaments or your tags each and every year and you want it to have the date on it so that the recipient who gets it and keeps it, maybe they hang them on their tree every year. Um, and that way you always know what year it was made. So there are just literally the sky is the limit. Something else about this, the Cheery Deer does come with the most adorable string of lights that you can hang in its antlers. And you will know that the reason I didn't add that here is because it was so much extra die cutting, you guys. <laughs> but it would be cute. So maybe you only have one or two to make. Go ahead and add that string of lights to the deer. I think that would be fun. You can add a brown nose instead of red, like you could just color in a brown nose if you wanted to. And then the other thing is you could take this wreath and pop it on a card front. So maybe you don't need tags or ornaments. Maybe you need more cards. This would be beautiful on the front of a card. I would definitely do like, I would want to do like a wood grain background. You know, Simon Says Stamp has one of my all time favorite wood grain, I think it's wood planks background. Create your own wood plank background so it looks kind of like a door and you can hang this wreath right on that background. Um, I will try to take one of these and post a little image on um, Instagram or stories this week and show you what that would look like and just for more ins inspiration. So there, the glue is right along the bottom of the deer. The feet are gonna go right back behind the bottom of the bow where, and then the antlers are gonna go in the front. I hope that makes sense. And then you can see I've got a white heart in the center of my bows. I'm adding some little white dots to my deer. Anything to add more embellishment. But the glue here, and obviously my glue clogged, I see that. It's always funny watching my playback here and sometimes the things I don't get cut out and I can almost hear myself going, ugh. <laughs> so we're just going to finish assembling these and then I will show you putting it all together. Now, choices for your bow hanger. I actually just picked some lawn trimmings twine in like the natural so it's pretty it doesn't take away from anything but you could also do something like I think a black buffalo check like little mini print or even red would be super cute or a little thin silk uh, ribbon uh, twine you guys there's so many cute ways to add a little uh, hanger to this I did mine super, super simply. I really like the texture and the weight of the lawn trimmings twine. And so I use that natural twine for this little, uh, for my ornament hanger. But just like it is right here, this would be so cute on the front of a card. You can add some really fun sentiments underneath. And like I said, I will take one of these and pop it on a card front just to show you um, another option for this card. I didn't think of it um, until I was doing this voiceover <laughs> or I would have done it for the video. I'm assembling my tags now. We've got Merry Christmas and the two from, I use this a lot from this Say What Christmas stamp set. I love the very lawn fawn fonts. And you wouldn't have to do this, but again, I'm extra. I like the whole reinforcer, so I did die cut that. Again, all textured cardstock. Just finishes off the tag nice. And really with the scallop background being red and I'm doing them back to back, you'll see that when I thread them together. Because they're back to back, you could honestly leave it in place because it just kind of creates a red back behind our reindeer. Here's that lawn trimmings twine I was talking about. I usually cut one to the length that I think I need and then I will just go ahead and cut the rest of them using the first one as a guide. There's also a really cool one that's kind of natural with gold sparkle to it or there's a peppermint one uh, kind of red, white, red, white, and pink, I think maybe even from Lawn Fawn that would be cute as well. Oh, and a green one. There's a really cute green one, I think. I'm going to simply knot these up at the top, nothing fancy at all. So I thread it through the top of the wreath and then back to back, I thread through a scallop circle. I knot it up at the top and that is it. 
So we have our wreath, we have our cherry deer, we have the bow with the heart, we have our pom-pom nose, and we have um, our little tag where we can actually write our to and from. The last thing we have is embellishing the wreath with the berries, which I do think that the wreath needs something. I think it just adds that perfect finishing touch. I even think some white berries would be cute on here. I definitely was going for that very traditional Christmas red and green type of look, so I did some red berries. But you could use sequins, you could use gems, you could use Nouveau crystal drops if you don't have any pearls. I want to give you lots of different options of ideas um, to get your creative juices flowing and thinking about what you might have in your stash that would work. And if you don't have any of those things, you can die cut the berries. Um, you could, from either red cardstock or you can color cardstock with a marker or watercolor and die cut it if you don't have the exact color you want. And then you could finish the berries with either glossy accents or a crystal lacquer, some sort of clear product so that they pop up and the berries are more dimensional and glossy. We are just going to add these to each of the wreaths. You can see I'm using my favorite Simon Says Stamp Triangle Tray with the pretty pink posh pearls. I'm using the embellishment wand to easily pick these up and pop them in place. And I am going to do this for all remaining tags. I really like adding the little dabs of glue and then I simply just pick out the pearls and add those to my wreath just like so. I tend to gravitate towards the like little mini and then this other next smallest, I guess, pearl gemstones. Those would be my favorite. I don't use the bigger size that often. I probably need to find something to use them on as I have loads of those in my stash. I originally thought I would do a red heart, like a rare clear or frosted, frosted heart in the center of my bow, but it really didn't show up. And then I found these uh, Trinity stamps. I think they're called a Tic Tac Jelly Hearts. And I loved the white. I really think it pops in the center of the bow and it just finishes it off perfectly. Here is a look at all of the finished tags. They are all the same. I mean, there's a few little minor differences since they are handmade, but I love having a set like this. It would make a great gift or just fantastic to have on hand. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for A Year of Christmas, episode four featuring these Cherry Deer Wreath tag ornaments. The supplies I used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my Patreon members. If you would like to become a member of Patreon, please click the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, and don't forget to click the notification bell to always be notified when I have a new video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.